What's going on guys? Welcome back to day two of the diffuser install. We're here in the garage. And so just to do a little quick recap of what we did on day one, we successfully removed the old damaged diffuser and we removed any remnants of any 3M double-sided tape or caulk that we had on there. Um, again, the caulk was for filling any gaps, you know, between the diffuser and the bumper. And it also helped stabilize and hold the diffuser on the bumper itself. So uh, we removed all of that and prepped the bumper for um, the new diffuser. So since we had the diffuser off the car, I came to the realization that it would be a great opportunity to clean the exhaust tips as well as the muffler. I kind of never had the opportunity to put a ceramic coating on the exhaust when I first bought it and put it on. And so this seemed like a great opportunity to clean everything up and put a nice little layer of protection on it. So to start off in the prepping process, we just used some basic soap and water just to get the major dirt and grime off of the exhaust tips and the mufflers. But we realized at that point that it was not going to be completely satisfactory. So we ended up going to the auto parts store and picked up some of this. This is some Eagle One Neverdoll. If you guys have never used this product before, it's actually really awesome. Really great for cleaning chrome and exhaust tips. So highly, highly recommend. So the Neverdoll worked flawlessly. It made the tips look basically brand new, which is great. Um, but it did leave a little bit of polish left over. And so we ended up taking some 70% IPA, wiped everything down, and then made sure everything was prepped and ready to go. And then we ended up doing one layer of the G-Technic C5. We let it dry for about 24 hours. And now here we are on day two, ready to finally wrap up this install. So here's one more shot of the diffuser side by side. They look virtually identical. So I'm really hoping that fitment is going to be good on the new one. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and put some 3M double-sided tape on the back side. All right, so we've got the diffuser here laid out on the table with some microfiber towels. That way when I flip it over to install the tape, we won't scratch anything up. But I wanted to go ahead and show you guys what exactly we're using for tape. I'm not gonna use any uh, BMW Beta Link or anything like that. So this is 3M Automotive Advanced Super Strength Molding Tape. It's double-sided. Uh, I think I purchased this from AutoZone for maybe 17, 16, 17 dollars, something like that. And I've got a little bit left over here from a previous time that I'll use first. You can use the double-sided tape from 3M that Lowe's and Home Depot sell. They've got a couple different versions, you know, a super strength, that sort of stuff. Um, that's probably what this one is here, but they're all very much the same, very, very similar. Uh, I did pick up the automotive one here and uh, we'll give that one a shot, but I don't anticipate this sagging or, or drooping or anything like that. Okay, so as you can see, I've got more than enough tape on here. Once you get it on here, you just want to make sure you press down firmly so that we've got a good bond between the tape and the diffuser. So that should be more than enough. The uh, rest of it, like this middle section here, um, that part really doesn't touch the bumper all that much, so I'm not too concerned about putting any tape there. And since we've got you know, mounting holes on the back, uh, middle section, as well as one on each side, there and there, then that should be more than enough to hold it on there. And I'll probably do what I did on the last diffuser and follow it with, you know, a really thin bead of caulk just here on the tip on the edge, right up against the bumper, just, just in case we have any weirdo gaps. Okay, so I've pulled all my tape off, or my, uh, the backing of the tape, so we should be ready to put this on now. Um, I did do another quick wipe down, but just with some IPA on the tips and everything, it's parts that I can't really reach too well once the diffuser's on. Um, and I also put some microfiber towels on the tips just to protect them uh, so we don't scratch anything. So let's get this puppy on. I already did a dry test fit before I put, um, you know, put the tape on and I think it's going to fit actually really well. So we'll see once we get it on here. Gonna ratchet. 
All right, guys, kind of want to show you guys an underside, if I can show you. So all of the eight millimeter screws lined up decently well. They all went in. Um, the only trouble I had was the far, the passenger side one. Uh, this one went right in. The two middle ones were really lined up, so that one was good. So it's the two sides that are a little bit troublesome. And so I just had to kind of play with it a little bit, manipulate uh, the bumper, and because you're going through the diffuser, the bumper, and then into the actual screw clip where it screws in. And so sometimes those clips um, will kind of separate a little bit. So there's two sides to the clip and it slides onto the bumper, right? So the bumper is in between the two, um, the two sides. And so sometimes this topper one, this top one, kind of gets misaligned and gets out of the way, pushes up, up out of the way. And so when you put the screw in, it doesn't always line up properly and it doesn't get this top part, it doesn't screw into this top part. So that's kind of what happened on the, the passenger side, but this is what this one looks like. Here's the next screw here in the middle, and then there's one on the other side of that. Right there, this is screw number three. So I didn't have any problems with the middle two. The middle two lined up fairly nicely. And then, and then finally, this is the fourth screw on the passenger side. So like I said, this is the one that kind of gave me a little bit of trouble. All right, just to give you guys a close up of what I was talking about uh, when I was talking about the clip being misaligned. So here's an example of one. You see how there's two sides to it. So the bumper, the plastic fits right in between the two here. And so what happens is over time, they kind of misalign. See how kind of jacked up this one looks. Fortunately, the hole is still aligned, but they, they twist after a while. And so what happens is uh, what I was experiencing on the, the passenger side was I was putting the screw in this way and since this top part was not aligned it would not screw through the the top side of this one. So I ended up uh, taking a little flathead screwdriver and there was a little bit of a little access point um, that I was able to wedge the screwdriver in and just kind of push this down a little bit. So like I said they kind of open up. They tend to get a little bit opened after a while like that and then no longer your holes are no longer aligned you know the more this opens up just an example here so it's more opened up the hole doesn't perfectly align then the screw won't go through and then it won't thread so I was able to realign it and get the screw in there all right so we successfully got this installed I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what the gaps look like. I wanna say fitment is very, very similar to my RW Carbon one, so I'm gonna give it like a eight out of 10. It might even be a little bit more snug, to be honest with you, but um, you can see there's really aren't that many gaps or anything. Let's see if I can get you more. There you go. You can kind of see this, my tape. So I had tape going here and then I stopped a small gap and tape. So you can kind of see that little gap and most people are not gonna notice that. Uh, Probably 99.9% .9 of people are not going to notice that, but um, the 0.1% of us that are extremely anal, you know, I'm going to notice that. So I might end up taking a little bit of caulk and just filling it in this entire line. So you can kind of see a little bit there maybe. Going across, it's actually really flush here, but here's kind of where my trouble area is, is right here. And then you can see my tape again there. And so this is pushed up as far as it'll go. Um, but this little gap right here, I just don't want water and you know dirt and stuff coming through here. And then it's just sitting wet constantly between the diffuser and the actual bumper. So here's this side again, very, very little gap. Overall, I'm really happy. So there it is. Back to normal. All right guys, so that pretty much wraps up the install. Um, if you guys have any questions or have any comments, please let me know. Um, again, there are tiny, tiny, tiny little gaps, which will probably end up driving me crazy. <laughs> we'll see. Um, for now, I'm gonna leave it the way it is, but I might come back uh, maybe in a couple days and put a, just a really thin 
uh, bead of caulk there just to hold it in place. But other than that, uh, super excited. Glad to have it back in the car. It really complements the rear uh, the rear end, if you ask me. So uh, I'm really happy. So again, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, uh, we'll see you on the next video.